to Barnyard Language. We are Katie and Arlene, an Iowa sheep farmer and an Ontario dairy farmer with six kids, two husbands, and a whole lot of chaos between us. So kick off your boots, reheat your coffee, and join us for some Barnyard Language, honest talk about running farms and raising families. In case your kids haven't already learned all the swears from being in the barn, it might be a good idea to put on some headphones or turn down the volume. While many of our guests are professionals, they aren't your professionals. If you need personalized advice, consult your people. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Barnyard Language. And today, you're getting just us for the whole episode. So we'll see how long we can talk. That's a dangerous, dangerous idea, Arlene. Yes. Yeah, yeah. That is a, uh, that's, it sounds like a dare. So we're going to do our update and then jump right into our gear and gift guide episode, third annual. Ooh. Wild. We are already season three, Christmas time for us, whatever holiday you happen to celebrate in your home. Um, so we'll do our updates. Katie, what's going on in Iowa this week? What's the news? You prepping for Thanksgiving? Yeah, did you? Well, I mean, maybe you don't know because Canadian Thanksgiving was like last month or whatever. Yeah, middle of October. But I have I have been informed once already today, as a matter of fact, that Thanksgiving is somehow next week. Right. Um, I'm having one of those months where, you know, in your head you think there's like a whole lot another week or there's not a whole extra week. Like, time just folds and expands upon itself, except right now... It, right. There, there are more days before this actually is going to happen. Yeah, somehow in... It feels like the whole summer sort of folded in on itself. Um, I think maybe, you know, when you're younger and you, like, have summers off or, you know, there's more. There's not a lot of seasonality in working from home with two little kids. Like, the farm's pretty seasonal, but. Right. You didn't feel like you really got that relaxing by the lake uh, vibe at any point. Yeah. Not like some people are lean with their fancy lake house. <laughs> whatever yeah I, w um, I went to the lake what three times the whole summer it's very relaxing yeah um especially with kids right like vacationing yeah. with children is always super relaxing definitely yeah. definitely what they love is a change of scenery and a change of routine <laughs> yeah it's very very yeah. restful it's basically everything i hate anymore um no we did a lot of fun stuff this summer but somehow it's already the end of november and there's Christmas and birthdays, and winter and snow boots, and it's just a lot. Anyway, um, I will be hosting Thanksgiving because I'm just here for the food. And I have found that when you are a foodie with particular ways of doing things, you basically have to host the big food holiday because otherwise it's a disappointment and I would rather... <laughs> Do the work and have what I want. And so, not be disappointed. And not be disappointed. And if you're disappointed, it's in yourself because you messed up a recipe. Yeah. And my kids can terrorize our house because that's what they're going to do anyway. So I don't worry about anything getting broken or dirty or whatever because it's our stuff. You know, everything's already broken and dirty. And it might already be broken and dirty. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I got two more guinea pigs yesterday, so that was exciting. We were only going to get one, but I found a guinea pig rescue that is as close as any of the pet stores, let's put it that way, and I would much rather rescue animals. Um, she apparently, the someone had dropped off a box of guinea pigs at the local shelter, but had not taking care to separate the boys from the girls when they dropped them off. So she mm -hmm. has a lot of guinea pigs now. Um, so I went to get one and I was like, you know, if you're going to have, because we already had one guinea pig. Um, and in many places it's illegal to keep a solitary guinea pig. I did not know this because they're very social little things. Um, anyway, if you're going to deal with, the mess from two guinea pigs and the produce for two guinea pigs you might as well have three so sure i believe you guinea pig math it's like chicken math but cuter and fuzzier um <laughs> fuzzier they yeah. stay cute rather than chicks who are cute and then and then they cute. turn into chickens yeah um anyway so our guinea pig is no longer lonely and in a slightly 
adult turn of events. The the woman who runs the rescue is British and probably in her sixties. And you know, of course, I had not met her before, but I pulled up and got out to get the guinea pigs. And she says, "Now, when you introduce them, because they're all they're all boys, to prevent more guinea pigs." Um, mm-hmm. She said, "So you don't end up with a box of guinea pigs like the person who dropped the ball." Yeah, yeah. She said, "You know, you might." You might worry about it because basically it'll be a hump fest. They'll just be humping everywhere. That's how they show dominance. The big one will just hump the little ones. And then you might feel bad for the little ones, but don't break it up. Just let them do it. Nothing. I put them in and they're like best friends. The only the only uh, drama at all was that these two babies were trying to nurse on him last night. And you were ready to like take a video or something of the... Uh... Yeah, I was... I was I don't want to say excited for the hump fest, but I had told her that I was. You were at least prepared. Yeah. You know, a, a livestock farmer. I'm, I've seen this before. Um, the other hilarious part I thought was that they use Ivamec on guinea pigs to treat lice and, and such, but they use cattle poor Ivamec, but it's literally one drop behind each ear. And I was just envisioning, you know, we're doing shoot work with cattle today, and I was envisioning taking my three guinea pigs out and asking the vet to pour them, but literally okay. just one drop. Little dropper. Yeah. 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 It just made me laugh, the idea of putting guinea pigs through a shoot, you know, to to pour them. Um, anyway. I'm surprised your daughter hasn't made a little shoot for the guinea pigs yet anyway. Oh, my God. She asked me again this morning for a snowsuit and boots for the big one so that he can go sledding with them um oh nice. the the girl child named her guinea pig they were very excited that there were two of them and i had not told them there were two i told them i thought i had heard a noise in the cat carrier on the way home and so i pulled out two and i said we must have broken in half but they don't think i'm funny they're getting old enough to not not be impressed by me um the girl child had named hers bud because he's a little brother and that's what we call the boy child you know he, Hey, buddy. Um, she calls her brother Little Buddy, and mm-hmm. it's incredibly patronizing and hilarious. Um, <laughs> so she named hers Bud, and then he named his Gud, or possibly his own boy child's full name, or Potato, right. potato Doggy, or Carrot Cake, or I had a whole list. He's come up with eight or ten names now yeah wow it's a lot of options what was the original guinea pig's name twisty so it's got it twisty bud and gud now <laughs> or any number of other names that will change as the days go on or an, yeah the other one yeah poor little thing so guinea pig news that's about it here what's happening in your uh the weekly update the weekly update because that's the noise they make if you can hear them in the background now is the twisty never made noise until we brought these two in and i could hear them all night last night just week 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 at each other so it's very exciting they had a lot to tell each other yes my house what has been going on so i have another teen my uh 12 year old upgraded and i now have a 13 year old in the house so of the four kids, we've got three teenagers, um, and he is, I was trying to claim just a little bit taller than me, but last night when the grandparents were over for birthday dinner, I was standing beside him, and I'm really looking up at this point, yes, to uh, to both my older boys, so feeling very short in my house. Um and he got to choose his birthday dinner. Did I tell this on the update last week? If I did, sorry for repeating. Um, he's a bit of an old man when it comes to food. So his choice for birthday dinner last year and this year was tuna melts and tomato soup, which is delicious. And then uh, we had cheesecake for dessert. So uh, no cake. And the last person's birthday, which I think might have been my husband's, I couldn't find the birthday candles that are probably somewhere in the cupboard. And then... Last night, as I pulled the cheesecake out of the fridge, realized, I don't know where the birthday candles are. So we just sang and ate cheesecake if there were no candles. 
at least a 13 year old is old enough to not really care and he would have been fine without singing too but we still did that because we can and arlene since you're always reminding me that podcasting is not a visual medium approximately how tall are you i mean so we get a sense of like how tall your kids are because you know that's right yeah so i would say i on my license i say i'm five five um so i would put him probably five eight five nine already um at just 13 so um yeah frightening i know my my mom said once that she figured that if i kept growing at the rate that i was growing when i was probably about the same age as my daughter is now that by adulthood i would be like 29 feet tall so yeah because kids really do shoot up for quite a while also visual medium. I'm guessing you're not that tall. I mean, I know I've seen you before, but... I'm actually only 27 feet tall. She put some bricks on my head. Okay, good. Yeah. Now I'm yeah. just under 5'9". Or I used to be over 5'9", but I have gotten older and... Mm -hmm. A little yeah. bit of compression. Yeah. My husband likes to say that he's a lot taller than me because he's... But he's like 5'9 and a half. Yeah. And he insists that it's like two or three inches. Well, yeah, I don't... Oh, of course. Sure. I don't think so, sir. How's your uh, How's your husband's nose job before we get into the rest of the show? Oh, yes. Yeah, he's doing better. He went for his post-op appointment this week, actually. Yeah, so he got his, uh, his nose straightened out on the inside. It wasn't cosmetic, but uh, he is breathing again. Wow. In any position. So before he, when he was sleeping, there was kind of like one way he could lie and be able to breathe through his nose. Um, but being someone who's in their 40s and has been doing physical labor for his entire life, lying in one position all night was not really very comfortable. So he'd been using a CPAP machine, but basically to force oxygen up into his nose and he doesn't have to use the CPAP anymore and can breathe. So as someone who got a CPAP this year and whose husband got a CPAP this year, I can confirm that being able to breathe really does make life more pleasant. So I'm glad that your husband has that like yeah, makes sleeping a lot easier too. All the time now. It's very cool. <laughs> all all the breathing, yeah. So there's uh he was went to the post op hoping that they would take some of the stitches out, but the doctor said it's actually better to leave them as long as possible. So he said that's a little bit uncomfortable, but it's up inside his nose, so I can't see them, but I believe that they are in there. And as it happened, the day of his post op, which is in the city, um, there was a field trip for the grade six, seven, eights that my son didn't want to go to. He's not, not all that Canadian. They were just going to a hockey game and he didn't really care if he went or not. So he asked if he could stay home. He offered to do chores. Um, but we said that we were going into the city anyway, so we would take him with us. So it was his birthday Eve. So we went out for lunch with him and also did a uh, side trip to Ikea because he had, as far as he could remember, had never been to Ikea before. So we walked around in circles as you do in Ikea. I actually, when I came out, felt a little bit dizzy, I think just because we didn't really stop too much to look at things because neither my son or husband were all that interested in looking at stuff other than sitting on some couches and chairs to see how comfortable they were. Um, so yeah, just doing that, like following the arrows loop through the uh, the whole store, I was feeling a little dizzy at the end, but that was the big excitement. Yeah. Post-op, Ikea, and a birthday party with tuna mounts. So that was the week. That actually sounds... I mean, not the post-op, but I guess it's good to get the good news. It sounds like a great birthday to me. Like, sandwiches? Ikea? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Every 13-year-old stream. 13-year-old me would have enjoyed it, too, so I can't really say anything. So I was thinking, since we're talking to ourselves, um, we haven't actually done a, this in a while, but just a reminder, in case you haven't listened to our first episode, or it's been a while since you listened to our first episode, I was going to ask Katie, what are you growing? Just give us a reminder. What's growing on the farm? Um, so we're in far northeastern Iowa, which is the part of Iowa that is not flat. Uh, most of Iowa had literally a mile and some of glaciers on top of it, and we live in the place where everything else got dumped the you know all the dirt and rocks and such so we live in a very hilly area i wanted to give people a, a sense of place you know because we don't it does not look like what you vi might visualize iowa as looking like um we have two children one who will be seven in 
two weeks, which is just, she's not a baby anymore. She's like a person, which is awesome because she's a person, but it's kind of, I did not expect to be so emotional about what people my kids are turning into. Um, and it is, it's great because they're becoming such cool people. And as much as I enjoyed the baby stage, they're a lot more fun now. Um, anyway, and we have a little boy who will be six in April, who is very much his own person. Um, we raise Katahdin hair sheep right now. We have, yes, I'm looking out the window. I can't see them. I don't know why I look out the window. Um, <laughs> We have about 35 ewes, which at the end of February slash mid-March becomes 100 plus sheep with the uh, the sheep math. We have 16 or 18 cow-calf pairs, primarily uh, beef Normandies, and a few chickens and a few ducks. Two dogs, five cats, three guinea pigs, a salamander in the basement, and my husband. Uh, and my husband and I both also work full time off the farm. So. And you grow some crops too. We do grow some crops. We have about three hundred acres. About a third of that is timber. Uh, then about another third of it is in conservation reserve prairie, which is neat. And the rest of it is in row crops that get fed back to our animals. So we're, uh, yeah, that's what we're growing. That's a lot of things. It is a lot of things. What are you growing, Arlene? So growing in the house, well, like I've said before, the oldest is away at university, but is back frequently or infrequently, depending on the, the time of year. And actually on the same day as Katie's girl child, uh, she will be turning 18. So a whole adult person which is also pretty cool and weird and hard to believe um so yeah she'll be 18 and then we have three boys who are 15 newly 13 a la tuna melts and the youngest will be turning nine in just a few weeks so um he and my daughter were due on the same day but do not share a birthday i think they're both grateful for that and we have a dog and a couple of cats who are in and around the house and in the barn, we milk 80 cows in a tie stall. Um, all the milking cows are Holsteins minus one, the jersey that um, did not go back to her home farm when she was a 4-H project. So we've got one jersey milking and the rest Holsteins. We raise all of our own replacements. So on any given day, we have around 180 animals in the barn. Um, from newborn calves to heifers, dry cows, all of that kind of stuff. And then in the spring through fall, we run kind of a show heifer program. I say we, mostly my daughter and some of our 4-H kids that show calves here. So there's a barn that used to have sheep in it. My father-in-law used to have some sheep, but he got out of the sheep business. And so it's now called the Heifer Hotels. That's where the show animals hang out during show season. And we have about 700 acres plus a couple hundred of rented land where we grow corn and soybeans and lots of hay for our soybeans all to sell, corn some for silage, some dry, and then some to sell, and then hay all for our own use. So some of it gets wrapped and some of it as dry hay. That's kind of the things we're growing. I think that's something that even farmers sometimes forget is that if you're raising livestock, you probably have a lot more livestock either sometimes a year or that aren't in active production, you know, with lambing or dry cows or calves or whatever it may be. It, you know, the, the animals you see in the barn at a given time may or may not in any way represent the numbers at any other given time. Or even at that time. Please. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. So we are going to go into our, like I said, third annual gear and gift guide. And Katie and I have some suggestions. And we've gotten some amazing suggestions from listeners and followers on social media, from 
members of our private Facebook group. So I guess Katie and I think we'll start off with our personalized recommendations and then we'll start to share some of the other ones that we have. So Katie, do you want to start with your first one? She's got post-it notes, everybody. She's ready to go. I, I do. Apparently Arlene actually put hers in the in the script and I have a post-it note, which I felt pretty good about. <laughs> so Hey, you remember to write something down. Yeah. One of the the things that we got a lot of recommendations for, and it's on my list as well, is the Boggs boots for kids and adults. But very excitingly, in my <laughs> massive boot purchase this fall, um, they have a line of boots with the 4-H clovers on them. They have boots with just the clovers on the side at the top, and they have boots with the clovers all over the uh, the rubbery part around the foot. And they are making a donation to 4-H with every purchase. And if your kids are like my kids and are beyond excited about even being Clover kids, they were a big, big hit. So I am calling out Boggs, but the 4-H boots in particular, because I thought that was cool. That is both fashionable and helpful to the 4-H program, yeah. right? So Arlene, what's on your list? So my first one is a standard in our house, and I have even gotten on board myself. Um, it's Lego, and I know Lego doesn't need any more advertising because they're doing fine. Um, I recommendation here for a Netflix series, The Toys That Made Us, if you're looking for something cool, does the history of a whole bunch of different lines of toys, and there's an episode on Lego, which was very cool. We've watched it multiple times. But anyway, Lego for all people. Um, I personally, for a Mother's Day this year and another, maybe my birthday as well, got some of the sets that are plants or flowers, which are very cute. I put the little succulents in with my actual house plants to fill in some spots because they're tiny and cute and you don't have to water them. Um, but they still look good with all my plants. And there's ones that are artwork. There's ones that's a bonsai tree, which is super cool. There's the architectural sets. Um, so Lego, not just for kids. And there's tractors. So my husband may have gotten a tractor from the kids one time because farmers are sometimes hard to buy for, but everybody loves Lego. Arlene, I can say that having visited your family, I got a thorough tour of your family's Lego collection and they do seem to really enjoy it, which is awesome. Yes, that is right. I used to have a dining room. Now we have Lego Zone. Well, we hardly use the dining room anyway. What's your next one, Katie? So this product sounds so stupid that they even named it the stupid car tray. It is a tray that... <laughs> so stupid. Yeah. It buckles in to the seat in your car. Like I have one in my front seat. Um, it You can order it with extra big cup holders. So it actually fits, you know, a, a big water bottle. Because at least in my car, the cup holders that are built in don't go anywhere near holding anything decent sized um it has a a rubber surface on the top so both of my kids have them too because the the one set of slots will hold the juice box perfectly they can play on top of it things don't slide off because it's rubberized and it comes with an elastic strap that goes all the way around so if you're like us and getting pizza for dinner means having to drive 20 miles um, it makes the seat of your car flat so that the toppings and the cheese don't all slide off. And with the elastic and Velcro strap, you can basically buckle your pizza in so it does not end up on the floor if you have to break suddenly for, you know, deer. So it's going on an empty seat? Yes, yes. Okay. I was having a hard time picturing it. I was like, it's on your lap? But okay, got it. I don't have one of those anymore because my kids can sit in the front. I mean, my kids use it on their lap. Okay, but... you could put it, as a kid, you could put it on your lap, though. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so it's kind of a cool thing. And it keeps your pizza flat, which is awesome. Yeah, if you have people who are only in the back seat still, then you have that front seat to do stuff with. Or make a move to the back seat. That's true. There's too many of us. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody needs to sit there for together, but yeah. Okay, fine. All right, Arlene, what's next on your list? Uh, my next one is another company that doesn't need advertising, but I don't care. Um, Crocs, I know they're ugly, but they're freaking comfortable. 
And they come in so many delightful shades and patterns and collaborations. Like I've been getting the emails this year. They had Barbie ones. They've got Shrek ones complete with those little like knobby things that are on the top of Shrek's head. I don't even like whatever you call those things. Um, there's a new line of like really ugly cowboy boots with removable spurs. I'm not going to go quite that far. Um, but there's also Arlene per one of our one of our other interviews. They do indeed make removable truck nuts for your Crocs. So yes, those are not made by Crocs. Those are an uh, those are an associated. Yeah, yeah. Crocs doesn't sell them themselves, but yeah, those are also a thing. And the most frightening one I saw the other day was like they have a new collab with uh, McDonald's. And they've got this pair of fuzzy purple slippers that have Grimace's face on them. So I don't want those. But my glittery house Crocs, like full, full silver glitter, are my favorite pair of shoes. And I actually went to a 40th birthday party the other night. And we were joking about wearing comfortable dancing shoes. And I brought my house shoes and I danced all night in my Crocs and my feet didn't hurt. So I say Crocs are worth the investment. Comfortable feet is worth a lot especially at a certain age. Yes, <laughs> exactly. We are both around yeah. that age. What's your next one, Katie? Well, I'm actually going to add another one because we're talking about comfortable feet. But last year I bought a pair of glare up slippers. They are felted wool with a, a leather sole. They also sell them with a rubber sole. And I am a very... When my feet get too warm and they get, you know, sweaty and gross and clammy feeling in anything synthetic, it's one of the most horrifying sensations in my life. I just cannot. Um, wool slippers don't do that, which is amazing. They are toasty warm, but they are not gross, which is very nice. Yeah. So. And we like a product created by farmers. So yay for wool. Yeah, wool well, and leather. They're really, you know, getting the whole That's right. The whole situation there. Arlene, what's next on your list? So speaking of products that farmers are uh, part of, so I don't think Katie got to try this when she was visiting me here in Canada, but locally there is a distillery and they make a product called Vodka, which is they make both vodka and then these cream-based liqueurs out of the waste product that's left over from cheese and other high-fat dairy products. So they use the whey and they distill it and turn it into alcohol. So um, it's, yeah, it's vodka, vodka. And this year I sampled when I was at the Row Winter Fair, they had a booth and they have a chocolate orange flavored cream that tastes like those chocolate oranges that you can get at Christmas time but with alcohol in it, and it's delightful. But they also have just a plain chocolate. They've got maple, coffee, creamsicle, London Fog, all kinds of different flavors. And if you live in Canada, then you can get it shipped to your house. And they were also recently on Dragonston, which I think is our version of like your shark tank there in Canada. So like they pitched their product and they brought a cow onto the TV. So they're a very cool company and they're working with local partners. They work with like a local maple syrup um, family for their maple. They work with a local, local chocolate company for their chocolate flavor. So they're also partnering with other small businesses, which I think is really cool when you're a, a small business yourself to to collaborate with other people. So if you're in Canada, you can ship yourself some vodka. And they have these Christmas sample packs and they look like little milk bottles. So they're also adorable. What else have you got for me, Katie? Um, Another one. I'm glad my kids aren't going to listen to this, but my husband sent me a bunch of pictures from the National Farm Toy Show in Dyersville, Iowa, a few weeks ago, because he, uh, I don't want to say let the kids play hooky, because they're in kindergarten and first grade. He, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? He took them out of school to take them to a farm toy show, which I'm fine with. Well, you might as well. They're little. It's not like they're prepping for the ACTs or something, like, uh, you know, an experiential learning moment. It was educational. Yeah. Anyway, there was a play area set up by Boundary Rugs. Um, they make rugs with farm maps printed on them. And I ordered one for our kids while they were still playing on the rug at the toy show. Uh, apparently, they played for more than an hour quite happily. And it was super easy to order. 
and it came already. And I'm really excited about it because I was going to. And it's your own farm, right? Like the imagery is is actually you can pick your own farm or ranch or small town, whatever you want. And you can you can get it put on. Yep. So they used a recent satellite photo of our farm and made a rug. And I'm excited about it. That is a very cool idea. And it's and it's boundary with an I, right? Yep. We'll we'll put all this stuff in the show notes, yeah. But it's like B O U N D R I, not not like the boundary line or whatever. Yep, and you can still order now for Christmas if you're listening to this approximately when it comes out. And there was at least a very good sale code on their website, and they do ship to Canada. So that's right. Even our Canadian friends can get one. Yeah, and the guy said I think December 10th is the deadline to get one for Christmas. So. Uh, if you're interested in that, make sure to get your order in and we'll share that that code too so that you know you can get a deal. Because we know our carpet farmers need authentic fields to get their crops in. Well, and because of the shape of our farm, it uh, the rug includes part of our neighbor's farm that my kids already think they're going to take over anyway. So I feel like this will be good practice for them to get to expand down the hill a little. That's right. They know the shape of the field and everything. Yep. So Arlene, what's next on yours? So my last one is the gift that you want to give Katie and I. And I know we mentioned at the end of the episode every week, but I'm going to put a plug here in the middle. Um, If you would like to give Katie and I a gift this year, we would love for you to support us on Patreon. Um, We recently made the decision to hire an editor for the show to take some of Kate's work off of her plate because she's doing too many things already. And it was both decreasing her enjoyment of the podcast and taking up a lot of time. So we are excited to have someone who's going to be doing that work for us. But as you know, that comes at a cost. And we are continuing to look for advertisers. But what would make the biggest difference for us is if you like the show, if you enjoy listening to us, that you would go on Patreon and you would make a donation to help us keep going. Because we love making the show for you guys and we love what we are doing and the conversations that we get to have, but it's not free and it takes time and it takes money. And so Patreon is the easiest way for you to support us. So patreon.com backslash barnyard language and you get some perks like this episode. You're going to get it all on video. So you get to see our faces through the whole thing. Yay. Yikes. Have you got another one, Katie? I do. We get a free subscription to a meditation app through work and i still pay for the calm app instead um they have meditations and um, mood music background noises whatever but my personal favorite is the sleep stories my daughter is obsessed with them it's someone with a very soothing voice reading you a very soothing story about something which is a delightful way to fall asleep but I mostly pay for the app because there is a sleep story of LeVar Burton telling you about the solar system. And it is hands down the most soothing thing in the world. I don't think I've ever actually even gotten to Earth and he's only starting at the sun. So that should tell you about how soothing it is. I did a word of warning if anyone else subscribes. There is a story read by Peter Lyons, who I believe is Welsh, and it is about sheep. And I have never considered that I might be more awake at the end of a sleep story, but it was actually really interesting, and it was all about different breeds of sheep. And so thumbs down on that for actually sleeping. He has a delightful voice, but... Right, that was more like more like a podcast yeah. episode. There's also actually an episode of Daddy Pig from Peppa Pig reading about how concrete is made, which should put anyone to Ooh, sleep in a very few moments. It's also very soothing. <laughs> so, Arlene, what else do you have? Uh, so another reminder uh, that we love Bruder equipment and we have a discount code. Not a discount code. Scratch that. We don't have a discount code. We have a way, another way you can support the podcast, and that is to use our code when you're going to buy Bruder equipment for your kids anyway, because it's good quality and it's authentic looking. And we know that everyone needs farm equipment for their kids or their not so little kids. So if you're buying from Bruder this holiday season, 
use our code and that will help the show as well. So we're going to put that in the show notes. It's on our social media. It's on our LinkWise or Linktree or whatever that thing is called. But yes, use our code if you're buying anything from Bruder because we really like their stuff and it would help us out. That is spelled B-R-U-D-E-R and they do sell replacement parts. So if your kid is like my kid and uses the excavator so much that the treads stretch out and fall off or the little steering wheels get lost or um, I think they sell replacement uh, hydraulic arms, all sorts of things you can buy parts for, which is delightful because their toys are not inexpensive, but they do hold up and you can buy parts for things that break easily, Mm -hmm. which is delightful. That is true. And also wanted to remind you that Sarah Calhoun, who we had on a few weeks ago from Red Ants Pants, um, has some amazing work pants, but also sells belts and shirts and adorable merch with ants on it. And she gave us a discount code after her episode, which still works. So if you need some work pants for actual women's bodies, she gave us a 10% discount code and you can use the code Barnyard Podcast Pro. Um, and that'll give you a discount and support some of the work that she's doing in Montana and all the amazing programs that she's doing. And you'll get some really great pants. So win, win, win for everybody. That really is a win, win. Anytime you get to do something good and get pants is pretty awesome. (laughs) That fit. Yeah. That fit even more. Yeah. That's even a bigger bonus. Do you have any more of your personal ones, Katie? Gift certificates to local businesses. Pretty much Any business you can think of will find a way to take your money and give you something that means that you can get something from them, Uh, which is awesome because there's a lot of businesses that need business. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. That. Yeah. They need your support. They need your money. Yeah, that's true. If you're going to spend it anyway, you might as well spend it somewhere good. That's right. So in the past, Katie and I have both recommended different subscription boxes that we like. And this year we found some ag-related ones for kids. So that is a bonus. So for younger kids, you can check out the Rural Resource Room. And we actually have their creator coming up on the podcast next week. So you can find out more about them. But you can go to the website now for the Rural Resource Room. And those are for kids um, in that three to six age range. So lots of Uh, sensory stuff, fine motor skills, but also ag related. And then for the older ones, there's one called Mama Sonder Learning Kits, um, S-O-N-D-E-R. And those are for slightly older. They're for recommended for kids kids 8 to 13. So subscription boxes that are ag related seems like a win for us. So if you're looking for something that extends the gift giving a little bit past just December. I know sometimes January and February can be kind of long evenings when uh, there's less farming to do and it's dark out. So maybe those are some things that you and your kids could do together. All right. Are we ready to move into our listener ideas, Arlene? Yes, we are ready for that. We got a lot of really good ideas this year. It was nice. We got a ton of great ideas. I mean, not that we like normally get terrible ideas, but no, it's good to get responses from folks <laughs> it's... that is right yeah it's nice to get lots of answers yeah. katie do you want to go ahead and start so generally the rule is not to give living things as gifts as much as i love animals and plants that's generally a pretty good rule to follow um farm families tend to be a little different and so we had several listeners who were delighted to have received or given animals or presents and um, who have animals of different sizes and species on their gift list this year. I know uh, past guest Dr. Jessica said that she knew her husband was a keeper when he gave her a brown Swiss calf from the farm where she worked during college. Um, my in-laws actually gave Jim and I an Ayrshire heifer when we got engaged. Um, who was a granddaughter of one of the last cows that they sold when they quit milking. And she's still here on our farm. So if you are in a time and a place that it makes sense and is responsible to do so, a living thing can be a really nice gift. 
but only if you're prepared to, to deal with the, the creature. That's right. Yeah. As long as you are prepared and they are prepared to receive that gift. Yeah. There's, there's a little research that needs to go into it. I got a very specific comment on Instagram from a, a certain child of mine. And this is a quote she suggested, a Jersey calf. That was a very specific comment. Yeah. Yeah. A Jersey calf from Good Genetics, preferably born March or June of 2023. So uh, I think she's uh, maybe planning on showing another Jersey next year. So uh, we'll see if she gets that uh, very specific uh, <laughs> request filled or not. How hard are you going to troll her with? I mean, w- will you uh, mess with her or will you just give her the calf? I, I don't know. I'm not sure that uh, that animals are going to be on her uh, list this year, but we can we can uh, we'll see. Yeah, we could uh, set up a pen. And, yeah, there might be some light trolling once she's through exams. I don't think that uh, we're in in the countdown to the end of her first semester of university, and things are a bit high stress right now. So no trolling for another few weeks. But yeah, we'll we'll definitely get into that. Um. Some other listener suggestions. Uh, several people suggested, I, I call them toques. What do you call them again? What do you Americans call a hat? Probably beanies. And weirdly, my mom actually brought our family several of these hats this last weekend <laughs> yeah. when she came up. So great minds, guys. Yeah, toques with headlights on them. Because chances are, this time of year, if you're going out to do chores in the barn and It's going to be dark. If you live in a cold place, it's going to be dark. And then you can have your hands free. You don't have to carry a flashlight. And yeah, so toques with uh, lights on them. They're cool and functional and warm. So uh, yeah, I said they were cool. They are trendy, we'll say, because lots of people suggested them. And they also have rechargeable ones now, which means they're even more lightweight. They used to have the ones with the batteries in them, which were pretty decent, but uh, now that they have the rechargeables, they are even lighter and easier to put on. As someone who has more than once found themselves holding a cold, dirty metal flashlight between their teeth while doing something, I can fully support <laughs> anything that does not involve putting a dirty, cold flashlight between your teeth. Between your teeth, yeah. Or yeah. Try, yeah, it's trying to stick it in your armpit or yeah, between yeah, your yeah. head and your shoulder. Yeah, any of those places you try and put a flashlight. So if you go to our members-only Facebook group... Which, I mean, sounds very like we're going to have 20 screening questions and and We're just making sure you're not a bot. Yeah, basically. Uh, There's some specific product recommendations, but as always, good work gloves, good socks, good slippers, the, uh, the consumables of the clothing world. So all the things that will either go missing or be destroyed or both. Yeah, you use them enough and then they're... uh... Yeah, they're done. But the good ones last a little bit longer. Safety glasses. I'm going to add earplugs, especially the Bluetooth earplugs in here. Safety equipment, uh, not sexy, but very important. And one of those things where having a nice one can be a hell of a lot nicer than having the cheap one. Uh, You know, especially when it's like earplugs that you found at the bottom of the ashtray in your truck. Um you know who you people are, <laughs> yeah. but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that reminds me, I think last year we also included things like uh, um, fire extinguishers and that kind of stuff. Also, you know, like, yeah, not sexy and fun, but, you know, they they do expire. And, you know, sometimes our farmers are hard to buy for and saving their life is priceless. So, yeah, that kind of stuff is... Uh, I'm going to I'm going to add to that to Arlene that if you have someone real hard to shop for, your volunteer fire department can always use a donation or mm-hmm. your local school can always use a donation. And I think the fire department especially is someone that uh, more funding has never been a bad idea. And if you need them, you really want to know that they have the equipment and the training that they need. Yeah, that's so. right. We could even hook them up with Dr. Madigan and do some... Uh... Some training for rescuing cows or something. That would be cool. Um, Also, portable power stations. I have had my butt saved repeatedly recently with having a portable uh, battery pack for my phone or whatever items. So I'm glad I'm not the only one who mentioned that. Uh, Insulated cooler bags, engraved personalized Yetis. Somebody is fancy. It's not my family, but somebody is fancy. I mean, it's a really good idea. Don't get me wrong. 
It is. And they actually suggested that along with the vodka, it was a Canadian listener. And I've heard that, well, I mean, I know it's a thing because Yetis are so expensive that sometimes they get stolen. So especially if you're buying for a teen or maybe a young adult and you get them personalized, then they might be uh, less likely to have them nabbed in, you know, from their their room in residence or from high school or something. If it's got their name on it, then they're more likely to be able to keep it. Or if they happen to leave it behind somewhere, it might actually make their make its way back to them rather than just getting uh, snagged by somebody else. And also portable propane heaters, which is how you know that it's farmers sending you gift suggestions for things when they ask for propane yeah, heaters. That's right. Um for the kiddos, art supplies, and for the teachers too, art supplies always. Craft kits, uh toy trucks and tractors, preferably from Britter, especially if you use our affiliate code. Um help us pay the editor because she's doing a great job. <laughs> and everybody appreciates me not doing the editing. So and real tools and safety gear in small sizes. And yeah, my kids are getting old enough that things like uh, measuring tapes are now in, in high demand. So Yeah, that's right. And if you give them their own, hopefully they uh, somewhat stay in, in their little toolbox rather than always grabbing yours. Yep. Um, for the slightly older kiddos or the slightly less risk-averse parents... Pocket knives, camp axes, uh, fishing rods, which I guess a fishing rod is not that dangerous, but uh, bows and arrows. I don't know. I've been around my kids when fishing. They're very dangerous. Yeah. Um, And a BB gun, which, yeah, it's a a classic. Um, We had someone suggest a small incubator for kids, which seemed like a really good extension to the idea of uh, giving people livestock. So, uh, yeah, if you're... uh, giving someone some chickens or you can just get uh, the incubator and then uh, hatch your own. Um, They also suggested things like egg collecting aprons, gardening tools, sorry, excuse me, uh, seeds, and then any of the books that go along with that kind of stuff. There's so many books out there that are good ones about farming and gardening, animals, livestock, that kind of stuff. And looking for authors that are actually from farms. There are lots of farm people out there. We've had some of them on our own show that are making authentic books about agriculture, not just the cow says moo and, you know, like the the pr- pretty tractor in a field kind of stuff, you know, like the actual, the actual stories that we're telling about agriculture and that are, our farm kids are going to recognize as, as being real stories that they can relate to. And also ones that we would want to give to our non-farming family and friends and their kids so that they're learning about agriculture, even if it's not part of their everyday life. And of course, always the farm animal play sets, whether that's, um, you know, like the, the little people kind where they're a little bit more animated or your more realistic ones. Any kind of farm animals always get lots of play. Uh, as Katie already mentioned, um, earplugs or, um, you know, like it feels like um, AirPods or headphones or whatever kind of listening things are always going missing. I know we have a safety set that uh, gets a lot of use during grass cutting season. So you can listen to your podcast or radio station or whatever, but also cut the grass at the same time. So those are handy. One person suggested a point and shoot camera for kids, which would be fun. You know, like our Kids, the younger ones don't necessarily have cell phones, but that's how we all take pictures. But they still like to take pictures and look at them, too. Boots for all the people. And actually, as I was mentioning, Crocs. Crocs actually have really good quality rubber boots, too. We had a pair that I think went through six or seven kids because they just never got a hole in them. They're lightweight and they uh, they really do a good job of uh, keeping the water out. So another another uh, plug for Crocs boots. I have to say, too, we loved the uh, Crocs boots for the, the boy child in particular because they don't have an insole, so you can just hose the damn things out. And if they're, you can, you can hose off the cow shit and then throw them in the washing machine. I would not mm-hmm. throw all that cow shit in the washing machine. Um, right. Or, you, yeah, you can just pressure wash the inside and they don't take forever to dry like those other ones that have even that weird... Yeah. Kind of that felty stuff on the inside, right? Because the the material is. If you're careful, you can probably pressure wash the whole kid, <laughs> on like on low pressure, obviously. But and yeah, you know, if, if your kids get real dirty, 
That's right. For the people like us who live in cold places, all the heated things. Amazon has a ton of different things. I was looking the other day at some some options, but you've got vests and coats, gloves, socks, insoles, all the things that can heat up for when you have to go and work in nasty weather. So keep everybody's parts as warm as possible. So yeah, there's lots of options out there to uh, to try and stay warm. Um, another one that somebody suggested was a sandwich maker, which I assume they mean like a, a toasted sandwich maker. Um, if you're like Arlene's kiddo and like you uh, like you a good melted sandwich, they are nice and I think almost certainly more child friendly than using the stove and a and a griddle and faster and Mm -hmm. Um, someone else mentioned the Carhartt Rain Defender hoodies which I'm glad showed up in here because I need a new hoodie so that was good to see a specific recommendation also the Muddies workwear which you know we can personally recommend some good, good stuff and supporting your local direct marketers um, whether that's Maple syrup, cheese, honey, meat. Uh, a lot of folks make candles and soap and things, especially during the off season. We have around here a number of flower farms that do subscriptions during the summer and do wreaths and things during the holiday season. And those are all lovely gifts and a good way to keep the money local. And and honestly, giving people stuff that goes away is nice especially for older folks you know something that can be used up and enjoyed and not cluttering their house up um also of course the gift certificates specifically for local stores or to rural small businesses um a lot of businesses will ship especially post pandemic it became a lot more of a thing Uh and it's fun to get to pick your own stuff out you know with a, a gift certificate to somewhere you love. So Arlene, I see another special one on here, which I also thought was a great idea. Yeah. And while we're talking about shipping, I just shared yesterday on our Instagram, and I'm going to share them a few more times. Um, Raven, who was on and talked to us from Maui a couple of weeks ago, um, we'd asked her to share some local businesses in Maui that that ship and that people from all over could order some stuff from and have it shipped to their loved ones or to themselves for the holiday season because we know that a place like Maui that depends so heavily on tourism and doesn't have as much now since those tragic fires, those businesses will really be hurting. And so if we can help them out this holiday season, you can help out some businesses in Hawaii and give them a bit of a boost and you get some beautiful things from a tropical location. So even if it's cold, you're going to feel like you went to Hawaii probably or a little bit. (laughs) It's a good theory, right? I mean, it's worth a try. Yes. Yeah, for sure. And this one we got from uh, specifically uh, their uh, homestead called uh, Godspeed Hollow. The quote I wrote down was uh, walkie talkie so they can stop screaming at their parents. So I thought that was a really good idea for uh, little people who are working with us or near us there's often lots of loud equipment or animals or they're maybe further away but still want to talk to us so having a set of walkie talkies you can talk to your talk to your kids or they can talk to each other or whoever right you can be maybe they can be back in the house and you can be in the barn or the other way around they run out and do a chore for you and uh, you just want to make sure that everything's okay using a set of walkie talkies is a great way to uh, to communicate and keep everybody safe and have fun but uh, yeah, not having your kids always yelling at you and trying to figure out what they're saying, that is a that is a good suggestion. Katie, do you have any other thoughts? No, but I was going to second walkie-talkies even for adults, because I know for a lot of us, you know, having enough cell service for your phone to ring in the barn, having enough sound on your phone to hear it ring, having to have at least one free hand to answer the phone, um, plus honestly... It makes it harder for people to ignore you if you can literally just yell at them. <laughs> so just saying. Yeah, that's right. Just uh, saying. You, you have to answer. You can hear me. Yeah. I know you can. You don't even have to answer, but you do have to listen to what I'm going to say. So. <laughs> yeah, that's right. 
So instead of our county fair question, I'm going to ask Katie, what's on your Christmas list? What are you hoping for this Christmas? Do you have any uh, thoughts, ideas for me? I'm going to go with time. I know, I know that we're all incredibly busy. I absolutely. Um, but whether that's time with friends, even if you're just running errands together or whatever, you know, I think it's it's so easy to to put spending time with people in, you know, we have to have five hours free where we can have a nice sit down dinner and a glass of wine and go to a spa. Really, it's not going to happen. But maybe we can go to Costco, you know, go to the big city, go to Costco, go to Ikea, whatever. Um, And to be honest, as much as I miss my kids because they're in school and they're in daycare and, you know, all of that, I am home during the week, but I'm working. And so all of the, the household projects that would be so much easier without a five-year-old and a six-year-old, which is basically every household project would be easier without them. <laughs> anything, yeah, anything you want to do in your house. Having the help to take the kids, you know, for a weekend day or something so that I can just get shit done or so my husband and I can both get shit done out on the farm or whatever. Um, especially if you frame it as do not feel bad about your kids being gone, because a lot of times I think this is something that can end up as, a uh, well, if you need help with your kids who are gone all week, like maybe the real gift here is to not guilt trip people for when they need help with stuff. Maybe that's really a guilt trip or the, the gift. Mm -hmm. Also, if anybody can mail me some vodka. I mean, I know it's illegal, but whatever, figure it out. Or just bring some down. Whatever. Sounds really good. <laughs> also, cheese. I feel like cheese yeah. is probably on my list. Yeah, cheese is always on the list. I feel good about that. Yeah. What's on your Christmas list? One year, my husband got me a cheese basket because it was literally on my list, and it was delightful. And I didn't share it with anybody. So what else is on your list this year, Arlene? This is on my list. You went all philosophical on me. My one of mine is, is the earplugs. You've recommended the the loop ones, like the the ones that will like reduce the noise but aren't completely noise canceling. I feel like I probably need those in my life sometimes. Um, and this is not to call out my husband in any way, but he um, claims that his hearing was in was within normal range. But when we watch the same TV show, for example. Um, our versions of what the volume should be are not the same. And I get that he needs to be able to hear it. But um, yeah, sometimes it's it's louder than than my brain can handle. So maybe having something that where I could still still hear what's going on, but not have to uh, not have to hurt hurt my head would be a, a good addition to my to my life. And we talked about craft supplies as something for kids, but I I always love some craft supplies because. That's what I like to do with my hands and to keep my uh, keep my brain and my my body busy. Even when I'm sitting down at the end of the day, I like to do crafty stuff. So I think craft supplies for adults are always a good option. If you're a crafty people, obviously, if it's somebody who doesn't like to do that kind of stuff, then don't buy them a new set of markers. But yeah, if you know a crafty person, we know that Katie always likes new wool. So for our Patreon people, you can see what I'm making right now. I am crocheting myself and what is that a tiny hat well it won't be tiny when it's done arlene but yes it's an elf <laughs> hat for myself we thought maybe it was for the guinea pig or something i did actually make one for the girl child's uh stuffed guinea pig i made her a little hat and scarf combo this week so well see it didn't come out of nowhere if anyone wants to know how serious my life generally <laughs> it's tiny crochet projects oh uh, yeah yeah. All right. So, are we going to do a Christmas or holiday themed uh, cussing and discussing? I guess. So, listeners, we have not been getting many entries, as you have probably noticed, but we keep pitching the idea that you can send in your cussing discussing because literally we want to hear them. So, if this is our plea to you, go ahead. Something's got to happen over the next few weeks while you're stressed and leading up to the holiday season, whatever that holiday is for your family. And put it on the speak pipe, and then we can play it. And we don't have to say your name. No one will ever know it's you. And then we can enjoy your cussing and discussing. Um, 
with that said, Katie, what are you cussing and discussing right now? I can't believe I'm about to put this at the end of a holiday episode, but I'm having a real, real moment with something here. And I'm going to try and make it as unpolitical as possible. But if you're going to say that you value human life so much that we should change laws to protect it, but you're not looking at serious, effective ways to make things like gun control or a ceasefire or feeding children or clothing children or housing children a priority, then don't tell me that you think children are a priority. Um, I might just ask the editor to cut this out. I might not. But we're, we're seeing an awful lot of folks, you know, all life is precious, but not enough for us to actually make any changes to protect that life. Yeah, not enough to do anything about it. And no. to be honest, the, uh, the New York Times published a photo the other day of six children about the same age as my kids lying on the floor of a morgue in Gaza. And, you know, and then I'm driving past all these right to life billboards on the way to drop my kids off at school and, you know, talking about one more mass shooting and kids being hungry and kids being homeless and kids not being treasured the way they should be. And so, you know, I, I fully support your right to be anti-abortion. I would love to be anti-abortion, but until we can help people not need abortions, maybe just take care of the kids that are already here, or at least think about it real hard. Because, yeah, it's not where I want my head to be when we're talking about the holidays. But yeah. But those are somebody's babies and those babies are just as important as my babies. And it can be real easy to say, you know, we're doing this for our children, but they are all of our children. And they are all somebody's baby. And when adults doing stupid shit, whatever, you're an adult, you can do whatever stupid shit you want. But well, that really brought the whole tone of this episode down. Uh, <laughs> sorry, not sorry, folks. You're getting... I don't feel like it's really even that much of a hot take, because leaving the politics out of it. Yeah. We're, we're a parenting podcast, I think, even more than we're an ag podcast. And if you can't prioritize taking care of children, that then probably I'm, I'm real surprised that you made it this far through this episode. Yeah. Or, yeah, any episode, really. But, yeah, I hear what you're saying, for sure. Yeah, really. Yeah. Yeah. Arlene, what would you like for Christmas? <laughs> and I'm going to I'm gonna preface this, so I had this great idea, right? You can crochet, uh, like, mosaic blankets of, of pictures. So I, I asked your husband for a picture of your favorite cow, and apparently you're... What what your husband thinks is your favorite cow, at least, is solid black. Not the best for a mosaic, you know. So you will not be getting a mosaic blanket of her because it would just be, <laughs> um, I mean, it would just be the outline of a cow, which kind of defeats the point of personalizing it. It's a lot of work for just a cow blanket, so. That is a very sweet idea. We could maybe, I'll just maybe send you a picture of the one that has the most interesting spots. How would that be? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sugar is uh, pretty much black, but she is delightful. Yeah. She uh, she likes attention, but doesn't try and take me out like some of the others. At least he was right about what your favorite cow is. So for my cussing and discussing, I guess it, it kind of comes from yours um, a little bit, but it's what I'm thinking about a lot lately is the helplessness that I feel right now listening to the news and I feel like I am one of those people who tries to see all sides of situations and tries to understand where people are coming from and there's 
there's, I know, especially when it comes to the Middle East and so many conflicts around the world, that there's, there are no easy answers. And yet, and yet, and yet, <laughs> it just seems, yeah, so horrific to watch people killing each other. And yeah, I don't know. And it feels like there's nothing you can do. And I want to, it's that double-edged sort of, like, I, I want to stay informed because I feel ignorant if I'm not informed. And yet knowing what's going on just makes me feel horrible. But not knowing also makes me feel horrible. So, yeah, containing all of those things at once and trying to trying to be engaged and not unaware of the issues. And yet, yeah, not knowing what to do or if there's anything to do right now. I think maybe what I want for Christmas is for everybody to find something that they can help with or someone they can help or something. You know, I know there's that Mr. Rogers quote about looking for the helpers and it is so hard. I mean, I can protest and call for a ceasefire, but it's not like the Middle East is waiting for my opinion on this. You know, but there are, I was fortunate enough to be able to make a donation to the guinea pig rescue yesterday because the, the woman who runs it is completely self-funded. And that was a small, easy thing that I could actually help with. And guinea pigs bring joy to the world. So it's a little something, you know, wherever you can. It's, yeah. You know. And even if, you know, we're talking about gift giving, if, we're talking about the people who have all the things they need or don't want gifts, don't want stuff, donations to something that you believe in or that they believe in is always a, a good place to go. Give them a, a nice note and let them know where where the funds went and, and what 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 that money is, is going to do in the world and that hopefully will make a difference to them and makes a difference to whatever organization you were able to support too. So yeah, it's always a good place to start because when it comes down to it, a lot of us don't need more stuff, but there are people out there who do, do need a lot of the things that we are already lucky enough to have. Yeah. So that's one way to end an episode, Katie. Woo. We brought the town down there. Yeah, so if you're in the States, this episode is coming out on Thanksgiving, so happy Thanksgiving to you. Hope you had whatever um, festive meal is traditional for, for your family and that you had a great day and a great weekend and maybe shopped on Black Friday or didn't, depending if uh, that's something you want to do or not. And happy Thanksgiving, Katie. Well, thank you, Arlene. And... You can find us where you, you always can on social media. We will try and create a file with all of the links for today's specific recommendations and definitely some of the codes that we have. And we will be back next week with a guest. Thank you for joining us on Barnyard Language. If you enjoy the show, we encourage you to support us by becoming a patron. Go to www.patreon.com backslash barnyard language to make a small monthly donation to help cover the costs of making this show. Please rate and review the podcast and follow the show so you never miss an episode. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok as Barnyard Language, and on Twitter, we are Barnyard Pod. If you want to connect with other farming families, you can join our private Barnyard Language Facebook group. We are always in search of guests for the podcast. If you or someone you know would like to chat with us, please get in touch. Bye.